the sidereal year exists as well as a terrestrial year. We understand that the terrestrial year is the movement of the Earth around the Sun that endures a period of 365 days. The terrestrial year has four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. The sidereal year also exists, lasting for approximately 26,000 terrestrial years. Our solar system travels around the zodiacal belt, and during its voyage, many unusual things happen. The solar system returns to its original point of departure after completing its voyage around the zodiacal belt, thus concluding the sidereal year. The sidereal year also has its four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Spring is the age of gold, summer the age of silver, autumn the age of copper, winter the age of iron. Each root race endures a complete voyage of the solar system around the zodiacal belt. Our actual root race, the Aryan race that populates the five continents of the world, was born after the universal flood and will last throughout the era of Aquarius which we are presently in. The voyage of our solar system began in Aquarius and will end in Aquarius. Before this present voyage, our solar system completed another voyage. Another root race existed during that previous voyage meaning in the previous sidereal year. I would like to emphatically refer to the race that inhabited the last continent of Atlantis. The Atlanteans had their bodies even till three meters of stature and they lead to create a very powerful civilization. The Atlantean continent was immense. It extended from the south to the north, from the austral regions to the septentrional ones. The Atlantean race had its four seasons, or ages. During their spring or golden age, borders and passports were unnecessary. Frontiers did not exist, and everywhere there was love among humanity. Innocence reigned upon the face of the earth. One who knew how to play the lyre could shake the universe with its melodies. The lyre had not yet fallen upon the floor of the temple and smashed into pieces. This was because the solar dynasties were still governing. As the age of silver arrived, 
everything from the gold age diminished. However, human beings were still in communication with the ineffable beings, or as it is known in Christianity, angels, archangels, principates, thrones, etc. The splendors of light of the golden and silver ages became dark when the age of copper arrived. There were not the same splendors of the past. The people started to establish frontiers. Wars were started. Hatred was born, as well as selfishness envy, greed, etc. Finally, the age of iron, the black age, arrived. Obviously, the age of copper was the atom, and the age of iron was the winter of the Atlantean race. During the age of iron, the Atlanteans developed a very powerful materialistic science. They built for themselves atomic rockets so that they could travel to the moon. In fact, these Atlantean ships were so powerful that they were able to travel to Mercury, Venus, Mars, and in general to all of the planets of our solar system. Atlantean medical science went far beyond our modern medical science. The Atlanteans were experts in transplants. They transplanted not only visceras like the heart, kidneys, pancreas, etc., but furthermore, they could transplant brains. The transplanting of brains was the breaking point of the science of transplants. Because of this science, a person could keep themselves alive for many centuries in many bodies without interruption simply by transplanting their brain from one organism to another one. The Atlantean science was indeed formidable. Presently, in the Himalayas, there are many hidden caverns containing certain medical apparatuses that are being preserved in order to transmit telepathically knowledge that can help human beings. From this, we can see that the Atlanteans did not need to be bookworms in order to receive knowledge. The lightning systems used in Atlantean structures was atomic. Those hidden caverns of the Himalayas and others in Asia are lit with the atomic lamps of the Atlanteans. The Atlanteans utilize solar energy as well. The Atlanteans were not just scientists, they were magicians. Sadly, many of them developed their magical powers purely for the source of evil. The Atlanteans were clairvoyant, and it is obvious that through this sense they could see not only the third dimension, but furthermore, they could see into the fourth dimension and even the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh dimension. The Atlanteans knew very well that the elementals of fire, water, air, and earth were sentient beings. 
of nature. Just like human beings, but unlike human beings, the elementals are entirely innocent. The elementals of nature are those that in the tales of children are called salamanders, sylphs, fairies, and gnomes, etc. They were a tremendous reality for them. With this knowledge, they were able to create a mechanical robot and endow it with an immortal and intelligent elemental by taking possession of those creatures which are invisible to the ordinary senses. These robots were in fact converted into intelligent androids whose purpose was to serve their masters. The most powerful right of Atlantis was the right of the god Neptune. This right lasted for many centuries. However, when the Atlanteans ignored the laws of the god Neptune, their society began to degenerate. During the Iron Age, the age of Kali Yuga, the Atlanteans possessed tremendous power. We remember the story of Jezebel, she of the gloomy destinies. Jezebel was an extraordinary queen that made herself immortal. When this queen found her glands becoming old or sick, she would have her doctors immediately remove the glands that were atrophied in her cell. Her doctors would extract these glands and replace them with others. The Atlanteans not only handled the endocrinology, but furthermore, they knew that the glands of internal secretion are related with the tatuas, meaning with the subtle forces of nature, because Atlantean physicians understood the vibrations of the tatuas, they knew how to use them. So this is how Jezebel, she of the gloomy destinies, lived for thousands of years. Disgracefully, Jezebel established in Atlantis anthropophagy. Young women and children were immolated for their religious cults to the potentates of darkness. However, before the people were sacrificed, they were brought into the laboratory in order to extract from them the heart and the glands for the service of Jezebel. Afterwards, the multitudes threw themselves upon the corpse in order to devour the flesh. The Atlanteans had degenerated a great deal and had now started using their awesome powers for evil and anthropophagy. Their magical signs became black. And with these changes, came horrible devices. The Atlanteans could now create a mental monster which will crystallize into existence through willpower and would be fed blood to stay alive. The last days of Atlantis were both 
frightening and apocalyptic. Their beautiful cities were destroyed by their atomic wars. And finally, the solar system had completed its voyage around the zodiacal belt. When this happened, there was a great disturbance in the axis of the Earth. The oceans were completely displaced by changing their beds. Those cold points on the Earth that we refer to as the poles were converted into equator. And the equator into the pole. Millions of people perished. And all of the powerful cities of Atlantis submerged within the ocean that now bears its name. Still we remember at this very moment the story of the multitude which invaded a certain temple amongst the earthquakes whilst everything was inundated with fire and water. The desperate people cried unto the great priest, Ramu, and they cried out to him, Ramu, save us. And Ramu appeared before the multitude, saying, The truth of it was predicted unto you many times and now is too late. You will perish with your women, your slaves, and your children, and if the future race follows your example, they shall perish as well. It is said by tradition that the last words of Ramu were suffocated by the smoke and the flames. Three great earthquakes sank the Atlantean continent within the boisterous waves of the ocean that has its name. When that incredible catastrophe finally concluded, the new root race began. Obviously, there was a group of people that escaped from within the multitudes before this catastrophic event took place. It is said in the traditional story that a great master named Vasvata, the biblical Noah, undoubtedly called the people together in order to tell them what was going to happen. But of course, the people did not believe him. They mocked him and laughed in his face. So the evening before the great catastrophe, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, not ever suspecting that the very next day they would be beneath the sea in an oceanic grave. The holy beings who are directing the destiny of humanity warned the master Manu by Vasvata of the coming destruction so that he might be able to save his brothers and sisters before the Atlantean continent submerged within the ocean. The great Manu knew what to do in order to escape in time they escaped in the night. During these times, the lords with the tenebrous countenance, owners of those very powerful androids that we spoke of earlier, also had ownership of supersonic planes for the purpose of space travel. 
the leaders of the select people of the masters Mainu by Balbata took possession of some of these plains during the night and destroyed the rest. When the perverse dwellers of the land awoke from their dreams the next day, they noticed with a stream astonishment that the waters of the ocean were invading their lands. So they ran to their spaceships, but they could not find them anywhere. Many of them suddenly understood what was happening and went in search of the followers of Manu by Svazbata. Only a few of them were left to be killed by the crazed multitudes who would momentarily be killed themselves by the crushing waves of the sea. Currently, if explored properly, we find at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean marvelous cities, magnificent palaces that in a poor time existed with many people walking within their splendid halls. Now only seals and fish swing within the dark ruins. Our solar system started another voyage around a zodiacal belt after the submergence of Atlantis. This catastrophic event finished off the fourth root race. Those few that were saved emigrated to the high plateau which is situated in the central table land of Asia to a small country which is known to us in these days as Tibet. It was there in Tibet that the survivors were mixed with the Hyperboreans and with the Nordics in order to originate the new root race, the present Aryan race. Our Aryan race was born after the Dilut. Obviously, each root race has seven sub-races. The first sub-race was formed on the central plateau of Asia. In those times, it was known as Asia. The second sub-race flourished in India and China and the emigrations carried humanity to the lands of Persia, Chaldea, Egypt, Jerusalem, where the third sub-race of the great Aryan race flourished. The fourth sub-race was formed by the Greeks and the Romans. The fifth sub-race was formed by the Germans, English, French, the Anglo-Saxon and Teutons. The sixth was formed right here in America, precisely in Latin America. We know very well that here in America, from Mexico, Central America and South America, many survivors of Atlantis came. The Nahuals, the Zapotecas, the Toltecas, etc. All of these ancestors of the people of America, like the Mayans, were living in Yucatan, Honduras, and in Central America. However, the Aztecs also known as the Nahuas, advanced throughout the land of Central America because they were warriors. Finally, 
arriving into the land of Panama. In South America existed the Incas and their powerful civilization. There is no doubt that the most powerful pre-Hispanic civilizations were the Mayans, Incans, and Aztecs. We do not want to say that the Chipchas, Haraukans, etc. of South America did not have beautiful cultures. But the strongest civilizations were the Nahuas of ancient Mexico, the Mayas of the Yucatan and Central America, and the Incas in Peru, who lived in the mountains of Cusco. When the Spaniards arrived here in America, when they arrived in Mexico, and after they invaded all of the land of Central and South America, they mixed themselves with the autochthonous races. Out of this mixture, the Latin Americans were born, the sixth sub-race of this gigantic Aryan race. The seventh sub-race is in the process of being formed in the United States of North America, Canada, etc. It exists right now. This seventh sub-race is a result of the mixture of all of the races of the world. We have stated that a ray lasts as long as the voyage of the sun lasts in its travel around the zodiacal belt. Our race was born in the constellation of Aquarius during the era of the water carrier, after the universal flood. Now the end is at hand, because the voyage of the solar system has finished. It has returned after many years to its original point of departure, due to the fact that in this precise moment we are in the era of Aquarius again. This era started again on the 4th of February of 1962, between 2 and 3 in the afternoon. At that moment, all of the astronomers of the world could see with their telescopes the celestial transit rush under the constellation of the water carrier. What we are asserting is perfectly documented. We are not affirming anything that does not have proper documentation. If somebody says, that the age of Aquarius has not started yet, or sustains that it started sometime earlier than the date already mentioned? What is that speculation for the signs? And what does it matter unto us? The plain reality is that the age of Aquarius has started on the day already mentioned. And this phenomena was seen in all of the countries of the world by all of the scientists, astronomers, astrologers, etc. It is a concrete, official, and irrefutable fact. There was, during that date, a solar and a lunar eclipse that some of you might remember. Cosmically speaking, only a few degrees are needed then in order for the solar system 
which is presently in Aquarius, to arrive exactly at the original point of its initial departure. The poles of the earth are shifted during the voyage of the solar system around the zodiacal belt. If right now we were to take a plane to the North Pole, guided exclusively by the magnetic needle of a compass, descending vertically to the land of the North Pole, we will see that the pole is no longer there, meaning the geographic pole does not coincide with the magnetic pole because the poles of the earth are being shifted. And eventually these poles will convert themselves into equator and the equator into the pole. This will happen when our solar system concludes its definitive voyage around the zodiacal belt. When we arrive to the exact degree of original departure, these continents will submerge themselves into the bottom of the ocean. An unusual event is going to accelerate or help this process of swift change to the axis of the Earth. We want to refer to the planet of Herkolubul. This planet, Herkolubul, is six times bigger than the planet Jupiter. It belongs to the distant solar system of Tilo. This solar system is rapidly approaching the Earth. Modern astronomers have before their sight the powerful planet Herkolubul, or as it is called in modern science, the Barnard Star. This planet is a powerful giant that will pass through an angle of our solar system. When this happens, the revolution of the axis of the Earth will accelerate violently. Then, the final catastrophe will occur. Some scientists believe that they will be able to push this monstrous planet away with nuclear explosions. But this will be useless. It will be impossible to push this tremendous mass of a planet out of the way with mere nuclear bombs. This same planet finished off Atlantis. And before Atlantis existed, it finished off the another continent. We know very well that the continent of Mu or Lemuria sank within the waters of the boisterous Pacific Ocean throughout 10,000 10, years of earthquakes and incessant volcanic eruptions. When Archolobus passed during the end of the Kali Yuga of the Atlantean continent, always through an angle of our solar system, then the universal flood occurred causing displacement in all of the seabeds. It was the end of Atlantis. The Caribbean islands are remains of Atlantis. Easter Island of the coast of Chile 
and Australia are remains of the Lemurian continent as well. So then, when her columns pass through the, an angle of our solar system again, you can be absolutely sure that another great catastrophe will occur. This indicates that the destruction that is approaching is not the first time, nor will it be the last. If we study very carefully the solar stone of the Aztecs, the famous Aztec calendar, we will find there an extraordinary wisdom. The Nagua say that the children of the first son were devoured by tigers. They say that the children of the second son were cleared away by strong hurricanes. And they converted themselves into apes or monkeys. They say that the children of the third son perished by the fire and great earthquakes, and they transformed into birds. They say that the children of the fourth son were swallowed by the waters, and that they converted themselves into fish. But they do not say anything of the children of the fifth son, meaning they do not say anything about ourselves in the past. They do not say how they perish, because we are the children of the fifth son. They are now speaking of the future, and they say how we will most certainly perish. The wise men that told all of the destinies of the races of the past also pronosticate for the future when they say that the children of the fifth son will perish by the fire and earthquakes. They also affirm that in the epoch of the fifth Son, our present epoch, the gods will be dead, meaning that the worship of the solar gods will be abandoned. This has already been fulfilled. We know very well that everybody in this epoch mock the ancient civilizations of this present Aryan race. But the Nahuas in the Aztec calendar made an emphasis when they said on this calendar that in the epoch of the sixth sun, the gods will resurrect. They also say that in the epoch of the seventh sun, everything will be divine. Let us talk about the children of the first son. The people of the first son were people that lived on a primordial land more than 300 million years ago on the protoplasmatic continent. It is stated that they were devoured by the tigers, meaning that they were children of wisdom. They were the protoplasmatic race. When speaking of protoplasmatic people, it seems to clash with Hegel's theory that it speaks to us only of that bit of salt named protoplasm. 
the protoplasmatic people had gelatinous bodies. They were ductile, elastic, very flexible. They could assume gigantic statures or reduce themselves into a mathematical point. They were also androgynous, reproducing themselves as the cells reproduce by cellular division. This same phenomena of reproduction remains in our blood. Thus we see how the cells are reproduced in two and the two into four in order to reproduce themselves. The protoplasmatic race was devoured by tigers, meaning that they were devoured by wisdom. When they talk about the children of the second son, they say that they were cleared away by strong hurricanes. This is an esoteric meaning. We are now speaking of the Hyperboreans. The Hyperboreans race had androgynous bodies as well, but much less gelatinous and more gaseous. It is stated that they were transformed into apes, meaning that some of them degenerated and perished. It is also stated in the culture of our people of America, the Nahuas, about the children of the third son, the Lemurians. The Lemurians were gigantic hermaphrodites. We can see their representations in those sculptures that are in Tula, state of Mexico. They were oviparous. The children of the second son reproduced themselves by budding, but the children of the third son reproduced themselves oviferously or oviferously. It is clear that those hermaphrodites ovulated and that the ovum that escaped from their ovaries was already fecundated. They were male, female, as the Bible states. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them. And he blessed them and named them Adam when they were created. Then, it is stated that in a determinated period, the egg was opened and a child was born from it. This child was then nourished from the breast of the father-mother. When we say that the Lemurians were hermaphrodites, it invites us to think. Certainly, the nipple of the male are atrophied mammary glands and the clitoris of the woman is an atrophied masculine phallus which has withdrawn with nervous ligaments. So, in the human organism we find the testimony that in the past the human beings were hermaphrodites. Still, in these times, we find people with both sexual organs. It is proof or testimony for people so that they cannot obstinately deny or ignore these truths that are unknown to so many people. 
The Lemurians were divided into opposite sexes over the years through the process of evolution. Children were born with one sexual organ more developed than another. Finally, the day arrived in which the children appeared on the unisexual. Then, sexual cooperation was needed in order to create. During the epoch of Lemuria, the sexual act was still considered to be very sacred. It was only performed as a sacrament within the great temple of mysteries. The Nahuas state that the Lemurians converted themselves into birds. I tell you as a testimony of this that in Bolivia, South America, people discovered a small race of what we would call Lilliputs. They had only 10 or 20 centimeters of stature, tiny men and women, who inhabited a small town. It resembled a doll town or toys for children. These tiny beings disappeared one night by placing themselves into the fourth dimension and transporting themselves to another safer place. They had to escape as they were afraid of becoming a public freak show. Many people were trying to get to see them before they escaped. But now only the tiny town remains and very well guarded by the Indians of that place. Thus, we understand that that it is very true that the children of the third son were converted into birds. The Nahuas state that the children of the fourth son will perish by the waters and that they will transform themselves into fish. It is true and of the public knowledge according to history that Atlantis was devoured by the ocean. As for us, the children of the fifth sun, we will perish by fire and earthquakes. Obviously, the earthquakes are being intensified from instant to instant, from moment to moment. What is happening? The fact of the matter is that the ocean floor is cracking more and more all of the time. A series of faults exists at the bottom of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Many of those faults are so deep that the ocean water is coming into contact with the magma of the interior of the earth, causing steam and creating immense pressure. This pressure is within the fault lines so as to increase the movement of the continents. This is the secret cause of so many earthquakes that are currently destroying so many cities of the world, filling the people of all nations with tears, pain, and mourning. The theory that states that the earthquakes are due to simple shift of the continents or some geological layers does not convince anyone. The crude reality is that 
Soon the trembling in one country will be the trembling in another. The earthquakes are going to get more frequent and intense all the time. And if we add to this the tremendous nuclear explosions that the scientists are performing with the interior of the earth, it is very clear and a clear fact that a great catastrophe will occur and should not surprise us when it does. It is really sad that this planet is submitting itself to a long agony. The fish of the ocean are dying because we have contaminated the waters. There is no doubt that the oceans have become huge garbage cans. The nuclear waste could cause, at any moment, a catastrophic event. The containers that are used to house the nuclear waste are, in reality, completely useless. At any moment, we repeat, this nuclear waste could provoke a frightful disgrace for our world. The chemical fertilizers many people have been using are, in reality, sterilizing the soil. The forests are being cut, finished, destroyed. The cities are full of pollution. There are many scientists that will affirm that in the direction we are headed, within 40 years, humanity will perish from the smog alone. We see then how the current humanity has degenerated itself from the ocean, rivers, lakes, the atmosphere. Everything has been contaminated. The organic life that exists on the flesh of the earth, trees, animals, people, etc., are necessary for the life of the earth. The trees attract determinated types and subtypes of cosmic energy that they transform and project to the interior layers of the earth. The most insignificant insect attract determinant modalities of energy that they transform and project in the same format previously described. Each one of us attracts determinated types and subtypes of energy that are transformed and soon retransmitted into in the interior layers of the planet Earth. The organic life of all animal, vegetable, mineral, and human kingdoms are necessary to sustain the life of the planet. Therefore, without the organic life, of all of the creatures of nature, the earth will convert itself into a great desert. Disgracefully, everything is being altered. Hunters are finishing of many species of animals from the forests, lakes, lagoons, and oceans, like seals, turtles, dolphins, etc. Because the hunters are killing off so many species of animals, large game reservations have been set up in Africa. This was done so that they will not finish 
of all of the creatures of nature. The fruits of the earth are being adulterated by the all-knowing squanderers. It's difficult to find pure apples that is without adulteration. Any tree without adulteration or grafting attracts, as a logical fact, the energy that is related to it. This energy is then transformed and retransmitted into the interior layers of the earth. However, a tree that has been grafted can no longer accomplish its precious mission. They do no longer charge with the vital principles that are inherent in all natural functioning organisms. These days, we see in all parts of the world very beautiful fruits that are a pleasure to the eye. But they do not produce in the organism the same effects of the fruits that haven't been altered by grafts or crossbred, etc. Because of our present actions, the earth is being submitted to a tremendous agony, and this must come to an end. Nostradamus, the great astrologist who lived in the Middle Ages, asseverates that in the year 1999, her colossus will pass close to the earth. And he clarified this in his prophecies, saying, Then we will see like two suns. And he emphasized that the consequence of this will be the end of this present Aryan race that populates all of the five continents of the world. It is obvious that this race must come to an end. In our past, there have been two world wars, the War of 1914 to 1918 and the War of 1939 to 1945. But a third world war is coming that will be more devastating than the first or the second. As far as the human being is concerned, people are full of hatred. As long as people carry within their interior the factors that produce war, there will always be wars. It is coming into my memory at this very moment, Daniel, the prophet, he said, the four winds of the heavens straw upon the great sea, and four beasts came up from the sea, and they were diverse one from the other. The first beast was like a lion, and had eagle wings, and a man's heart was given to it. The second beast was likened unto a bear. The third beast was like unto a leopard, and the fourth beast was dreadful and terrible and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth, and everything that the beast devoured broke into pieces, and it stamped the residue of the pieces with its feet. It was diverse from all the other beasts and shall devour the whole earth. And shall wear it down and break it into pieces. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. 
But when judgment takes its seat, the judge will take away his dominion, and the kingdom will be delivered unto the kingdom of the saints. When the kingdom was delivered unto the saints, this is the arrival of the new golden age. Obviously, Daniel is referring to the four ages or the four seasons of our present Aryan race. The age of gold, the age of silver, the age of copper, and the age of iron. The age of iron which is our present age. In this Iron Age, humanity arrives in the actual state in which it is. The fourth beast has been dreadful and terrible, just as Daniel said, diverse from all of the other beasts. In other words, this Kali Yuga or Iron Age is very diverse from all of the other ages. But his end will come from night to morning, as it is written. The day of the Lord will come when it is not expected. He will come as a thief in the night. And in this precise moment, we are in the beginning of the end. The Apocalypse tells us of the beginning of the end, and we are precisely in the end of our era, the end of Kali Yuga, the end of this fourth beast. You will see within a very short time how the cities of the world will fall how everything will be reduced to ashes. The earthquakes will intensify frightfully. Each time will shake the earth more and more powerful. You will be witness within a very short time in your body of bones and flesh to what is going to happen. And you saw what happened during the years 1982 and 1992. You remember by yourselves. It is necessary that we pay attention to the times, because the end is at hand. With solar mechanics, we can demonstrate that the solar system is arriving at the end of a great voyage. Truly, I say unto you, that every voyage of the solar system around the zodiacal belt has always finished in a great catastrophe. As the scriptures state, the sins of humanity have reached unto heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Babylon the Great, mother of all fornications and abominations of the earth, will be destroyed. And from this perverse civilization of vipers, none will remain, not even one stone upon a stone. Peter, when prophesying, said, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works therein, shall be burned up. Certainly, the fire will be the first element to enter into action with the approaching of the planet Hercolobus. The magnetism of this planet is so great that the magma within the interior of the earth will start to surface. Then many volcanoes will start to emerge everywhere and a great bonfire will be propagated from the north to the south pole. However, 
before these events come to pass, the Antichrist will perform through marvel. The Antichrist or the false signs, this actual civilization and all of this technology will perform great miracles. The Antichrist, the technological science of this epoch of Kali Yuga, will make atomic rockets that will be able to travel to any planet of our solar system. Frightening weapons will be invented, and all of the people will kneel to the ground worshipping the great beast, and they will say, there is nothing like this official science. There is nothing like this technology of these modern times. There is no one like unto the beast. There is no one like the Antichrist. Few will be those which will hear the words of Christ in a few times. Within a short period of time, people will not listen to this. People say in these times, I want demonstrations. I have to see it to believe it. I only believe in what the physical senses inform me. Those mystical matters from the roof above no longer concern me. There is no one like the beast, they say. There is nothing like the official science, like the technological time in which we are. They think that this civilization will endure forever. It's what they think. So then, all of you who are listening in this very moment, let it be known that the times of the end have arrived. But if, as in the case of Atlantis, there were a select few that knew to lead with Manu by Vazbata toward the central plain of Asia, then there must as well in these times be a select group that will survive the impeding doom they will be taken away from within the fire and the smoke before the great catastrophe. Who are the ones that will be chosen to survive? These will be people who have chosen to explore themselves internally. Those who will eliminate from themselves their psychological defects. Those who are finished with the cult to the ego, with the cult to the myself or itself. These chosen people will be formed by women and men of good will that in reality are able to transform themselves radically. These select people will be taken to a specific place in the Pacific Ocean. These chosen few will live during the end in a place where they will be able to see the fight between the fire and the water in a battle to the death. This battle will be during two centuries. And when a double rainbow appears upon the clouds, a sight of new alliance of God with human beings, these people will be abide in the new lands and new heavens. Then the golden age will dawn. That is why Virgil the poet of Mantua, the great master of Dante Alighieri, 
writer of the Divine Comedy said, The Golden Age has arrived, and a new progeny commands.